Alright guys, so welcome back. This is uh, video four of the Kentucky Welding Institute uh, welding competition coming up in April. Be sure to check that out. If you haven't signed up yet, go ahead and get that entry fee posted and get it into us so way we can lock you in the spot. So again, you know, last week, if you haven't been tuning in our videos, be sure to go check them out. But last week we put the hot passes in on mine and Dalton's uh, 2G and 3G uh, coupons we got here. Uh, you know, we got our coupon, we got our hot passes in here. And, you know, ours are kind of, you know, a little bit below flush, so we're going to run a fill for you today. We put those in last week. Now, again, if you're running this, that eighth inch rod is kind of a big rod, especially on this 3 8 plate. Don't freak out if you actually fill that thing out with one pass. You know what I mean? It just depends on how you practice. If you're going a little bit slower than we are, you can actually get that thing filled out in one pass. But again, today on ours, we've actually done it with, you know, we're going to have to run a fill. So uh, that's what we're going to do today. We're actually going to run the fill and the cap on these. So again, stay tuned. All right, guys. So we'll just put the fill in on the 2G. And then after we get that down, we're going to go ahead and do the cap. And then we'll turn everything over to Dalton. All right, guys, you ready? All right, guys, so here you can see me putting the first fill pass in. Uh, again, you know, you're running these, these eighth-inch rods here. You know, you probably could get the hot pass and put it in with a fill on one bead. Uh, but the main thing is here is just kind of watching the toes of the web, making sure everything's tying in good, making sure you're really watching that bottom toe and you're not going to get any trap slag on it. That's the main thing. And again, you know, when you're putting your fill in, uh, depending on how quickly your travel speed is, you know, that will determine, you know, if you need to put a second fill in or not. For me, I run just a touch bit slower, putting down quite a bit of metal. You know, I just go ahead and watch the, the top edges and bottom edges of the bevel, make sure that my toes are touching it, and my fill's going to come out perfectly flush, and then I'll be ready to cap afterwards. All right, guys, so we got the fill in. Uh, one thing to make sure is make sure you're getting this all cleaned out and everything. Make sure there's no trap sag. Make sure you're looking over the bead. Make sure there's no porosity or anything like that. And we're going to do some repairs in another video. And we'll show you how to fix some of that stuff and say if it does come up. That way you're not coming in this you know, totally blind. The way you have an idea of what to do. Uh, but right now, let's talk about actually putting the cap bead on this one. Uh, you can see that I left a little bit of the bevel edge sitting out right here. That's going to give me a good line to go by right here. That'll help me put my cap on good and straight to make sure I'm not going out too far outside the weld zone. Uh, when you're coming in this, you know, you're running these eighth inch rods. They're, they're a big rod. They're going to put down a lot of metal. So again, what I do is I always just run that rod up just a touch bit above the bevel edge, just to let enough to let the toe of the weld just roll past that right there. And again, when it comes to this, it doesn't matter how many beads you put on there. The only thing that matters is not getting too far outside the weld zone. All right? So again, if you're coming up in here and you're starting to put cat beads up into this, that's no good, guys. You want to make sure that you're staying inside this right here. Typically for an eighth inch rod, two beads, uh, that's pretty much about all you're going to need. But again, three beads will be okay. Just making sure that you're not getting too far outside that weld zone. All right, guys, let's put a cat bead on. All right, guys, so you see there at the beginning how I struck up, came back, and made a little circle again. You always want to make sure you run your 718s like that. In case there's any trap slag or process, you're going to want to burn that out. Now, you can see how I got my rod just a touch bit above that bottom bevel. Uh, when you're doing this, you know, you can run your rods depending on however you do it. Uh, you can point right at the edge of the bevel, or like what I do is I come up just a little bit above it. I'm just letting the bottom toe of that first weld actually tie into it. Again, that kind of helps me, makes me a little quicker when I go to cap. Some people like to run it down just a little bit just to make sure they don't miss that edge. They don't get any undercut. Uh, but again, it's all up to you on how you want to run everything, how you want to do it. And that's just what I like to do. It kind of saves me a little bit of time. And I'll be able to put a two-bead cap on this and get away with it. Some people, you may have to put three, and that's okay. And you come all the way out to the end, just make sure you sit there a second, pause, and then let it fill in. All right, guys, so we got the first bead of the cap in. Uh, you can see right here, the toe is just barely rolling over that edge. Leaves me just a little bit to fill out on the top. Now with this one right here, all I gotta do is make sure that, that that bottom toe of that weld just barely touches that top edge about halfway of this weld right here. And just make sure it covers that top edge of the bevel. Now that for that, it's all good. Just make sure there's no undercut. All right, look guys, let's get it in there. So again, you know how it's stuck out there, you wanna make sure you do that even on your high pasture fields, do all that just the same, fire up in front, drag back. Now here, you can see how that top edge of the bevel, I've almost got it filled out and the cap with one. Uh, but again, you know, on this second bead, I just got to make sure it's tied into that bottom weld and then just rolling over past that edge of that bevel, make sure there ain't no undercut happening. 
basically here guys just make sure you're focused on the toes of the web make sure it's tied into that bottom web and make sure you're not getting any undercut uh, when you're doing that uh, code you do have a tolerance with it but again you know you want to make sure you're putting down your best welds possible so again you know kind of watching those toes and if you are getting a little bit of undercut you can see it if you're really watching that top toe all you got to do is just slow down a little bit and just make sure that fills in really nice All right, guys, I just got the 2G finished up, got the cap on it. We're going to talk about it here in a minute, but right now I'm going to kick you over to Dalton. We're going to finish out that 3G. See you in a few. All right, guys, now that we got the hat pass in, we're going to go ahead and fill her up. All right, but here's the tricky thing, right? So we're burning an eighth-inch rod on this 3 8 plate. So once you get towards the top, somewhere about right in here, it's going to start falling out on you. Let's do it. Alright guys, here you can see Dalton putting his fill in. You know, he's really just kind of watching those toes. Uh, you know, he's going up through there, he's watching and making sure after his hot pass again. He's going to do it in a one bead fill. Because uh, again, he has a pretty good sized rod there and he's putting down a lot of metal. Just making sure you're watching the toes and it's coming up just barely to the edge of those bevels. You don't really want to roll over typo because then that kind of pushes your weld zone out a little bit. Um, just making sure that you're keeping everything nice and clean. And again, if you can stay inside those bevels, the, the bevels that are left there, they're good, clean, straight edges. That's going to help make you run your caps nice and straight. And that'll keep everything as clean as looking as best as possible for when you go to turn this into the judges. All right, guys, now that we got it filled up, we're going to go ahead and cap. Alright guys, so here you can see Dalton putting the cap on. Uh, it's coming out really nice, you know, he's actually watching the edge of the toes. He runs them the same way as me, he kind of brings that puddle towards the inside. Um, again, you know, if you do that, if you want to kind of, some people run that rod just right on the edge of the bevel. Um, basically it puts half the beading on the plate and half the beading inside the fill zone. That's okay, I mean again, you don't want to run a whole bead outside because that's, you're getting into the heat effect zone and you're outside your weld zone there. Uh, but again, you know, he's running that rod straight up on that edge, right on the inside, just a touch bit, and everything's tying in nice and smooth. And you can see how Dalton struck up there, he come down, he's going to make sure that he's going to burn all that slag out and trap slag and porosity and all that stuff. Again, you know, firing up those 70 things, if you fire up off the bottom, they have a tendency to want to throw some porosity in there. So you want to come up just a little bit above, strike up, come down and make you a loop there. Now again, the same way as the 2G, all you have to do here is kind of tie into that first bead you put in. Uh, you want to overlap it just about a half, pretty close to somewhere in there. And then just make sure you're watching that outside toe, make sure it's really rolling over that bevel. Uh, it's tying in a no undercut. And again, the same as the 2G here, you want to make sure that if it is undercutting a little bit, if you want to catch it while it's happening, you can slow down a little bit. And that all comes back to travel speed. You can all also notice the uh, right angle of this, you know, he's got a slight angle up to it. When you're running that 3G, it's the same as you run your hot pass and your fills with that. Again, if you point down at it too hard, it wants to roll that, that melting puddle out from underneath of you. So just make sure that you got a good little angle up uh, and you're traveling right up through there. Don't point up too hard because then you actually start heating that metal up in front of you and that weld will start rolling out from underneath of you too. All right, guys, so now that we got our cap, it's not over an eighth of an inch. There's no undercut anywhere. This is what it's going to look like. So now we're going to take a wire wheel and clean her up. All right, guys, just finished this 3G cap. Everything looks good. It's all acceptable within the D11 code. There's no undercut. It's not over eighth of an inch. And the way I like to tell that it's not over eighth of an inch is I take the end of my rod, so this is eighth of an inch, and run it down the side. It's not over eighth, so everything is good within the D11 code, and that's what we're tested by. All right, guys, so now we've got the 2G and the 3G capped out. It's all above flush. It's all under eighth. It's all cleaned up. So now we're ready to step out of the booth and call QC. Look good, bud? I love it. All right, guys. Now, when you get to this point, you actually like and you're wanting to turn it in to us. Uh, we'll actually take over, break your coupons down. We're going to get them to the back room so the judges can take a look at them and get them everything ready for you. Again, make sure that you're staying, you're watching, getting ready for our next videos. we got some stuff you want to avoid and actual repairs. All right. Stay tuned for our next video. See y'all.